In computer architecture, 64-bit computing is the use of processors that have data path widths, integer size, and memory address widths of 64 bits 8 octets. Also, 64-bit computer architectures for central processing units CPUs and arithmetic logic units ALUs are those that are based on processor registers, address buses, or data buses of that size. From the software perspective, 64-bit computing means the use of code with 64-bit virtual memory addresses. However, not all 64-bit instruction sets support full 64-bit virtual memory addresses, x86-64 and ARMv8, for example, support only 48 bits of virtual address, with the remaining 16 bits of the virtual address required to be all zeros or all ones, and several 64-bit instruction sets support fewer than 64 bits of physical memory address. The term 64-bit describes a generation of computers in which 64-bit processors are the norm. 64 bits is a word size that defines certain classes of computer architecture, buses, memory and CPUs, and by extension the software that runs on them. 64-bit CPUs have been used in supercomputers since the 1970s Cray 1, 1975, and in reduced instruction set computing based workstations and servers since the early 1990s, notably the MIPS R4000, R8000, and R10000, the DEC Alpha, the Sun UltraSpark, and the IBM 64 Rupees and POWER3 and later power microprocessors. In 2003, 64-bit CPUs were introduced to the formerly 32-bit mainstream personal computer market in the form of x86-64 processors and the PoRPCG5, and were introduced in 2012 into the ARM architecture targeting smartphones and tablet computers, first sold on September 20, 2013, in the iPhone 5S powered by the ARMV. 8A Apple A7 system on a chip SOC. A 64-bit register can store 264 over 18 quintillion or 1.8 times 1019 different values. The range of integer values that can be stored in 64 bits depends on the integer representation used. With the two most common representations, the range is 0 through 18 quintillion 446 quadrillion 744 trillion 73 billion 709 million 551 thousand 615 264 minus 1 for representation as an unsigned binary number, and minus 9 quintillion 223 quadrillion 370 Two trillion thirty six billion eight hundred and fifty four million seven hundred and seventy five thousand eight hundred and eight minus two hundred and sixty three through nine quintillion two hundred and twenty three quadrillion three hundred and seventy two trillion thirty six billion eight hundred and fifty four million seven hundred and seventy five thousand eight hundred and seven two hundred and sixty three minus one for representation as two's complement. Hence, a processor with 64-bit memory addresses can directly access 264 bytes equals 16 exabytes of byte addressable memory. With no further qualification, a 64-bit computer architecture generally has integer and addressing processor registers that are 64 bits wide, allowing direct support for 64-bit data types and addresses. However, a CPU might have external data buses or address buses with different sizes from the registers, even larger the 32-bit Pentium had a 64-bit data bus, for instance. The term may also refer to the size of low-level data types, such as 64-bit floating-point numbers. <laughs> 
Topic: Architectural implications. Processor registers are typically divided into several groups, integer, floating point, single instruction, multiple data SIMD, control, and often special registers for address arithmetic which may have various uses and names such as address, index, or base registers. However, in modern designs, these functions are often performed by more general purpose integer registers. In most processes, only integer or address registers can be used to address data in memory, the other types of registers cannot. The size of these registers therefore normally limits the amount of directly addressable memory, even if there are registers, such as floating-point registers, that are wider. Most high-performance 32-bit and 64-bit processors some notable exceptions are older or embedded ARM architecture ARM, and 32-bit MIPS architecture mixed CPUs, have integrated floating-point hardware, which is often, but not always, based on 64-bit units of data. For example, although the x86, x87 architecture has instructions able to load and store 64-bit and 32-bit floating-point values in memory, the internal floating-point data and register format is 80 bits wide, while the general-purpose registers are 32 bits wide. In contrast, the 64-bit alpha family uses a 64-bit floating-point data and register format, and 64-bit integer registers. History Many computer instruction sets are designed so that a single integer register can store the memory address to any location in the computer's physical or virtual memory. Therefore, the total number of addresses to memory is often determined by the width of these registers. The IBM system, 360 of the 1960s was an early 32-bit computer, it had 32-bit integer registers, although it only used the low order 24 bits of a word for addresses, resulting in a 16 megabytes 16 times 10,242 bytes address space. 32-bit superminicomputers, such as the DEC VAX, became common in the 1970s, and 32-bit microprocessors, such as the Motorola 68000 family and the 32-bit members of the x86 family starting with the Intel 80386, appeared in the mid-1980s, making 32 bits something of a de facto consensus as a convenient register size. A 32-bit address register meant that 232 addresses, or 4 GB of random access memory RAM, could be referenced. When these architectures were devised, 4 GB of memory was so far beyond the typical amounts 4 megabytes in installations, that this was considered to be enough headroom for addressing. 4.29 billion addresses were considered an appropriate size to work with for another important reason, 4.29 billion integers are enough to assign unique references to most entities in applications like databases. Some supercomputer architectures of the 1970s and 1980s, such as the Cray-1, used registers up to 64 bits wide, and supported 64-bit integer arithmetic, although they did not support 64-bit addressing. In the mid-1980s, Intel i860 development began culminating in a too late for Windows NT 1989 release. The i860 had 32-bit integer registers and 32-bit addressing, so it was not a fully 64-bit processor, although its graphics unit supported 64-bit integer arithmetic. 
However, 32 bits remained the norm until the early 1990s, when the continual reductions in the cost of memory led to installations with amounts of RAM approaching 4 GB, and the use of virtual memory spaces exceeding the 4 GB ceiling became desirable for handling certain types of problems. In response, MIPS and DEC developed 64-bit microprocessor architectures, initially for high-end workstation and server machines. By the mid-1990s, HAL Computer Systems, Sun Microsystems, IBM, Silicon Graphics, and Hewlett-Packard had developed 64-bit architectures for their workstation and server systems. A notable exception to this trend were mainframes from IBM, which then used 32 bit data and 31 bit address sizes. The IBM mainframes did not include 64 bit processors until 2000. During the 1990s, several low cost 64 bit microprocessors were used in consumer electronics and embedded applications. Notably, the Nintendo 64 and the PlayStation 2 had 64-bit microprocessors before their introduction in personal computers. High-end printers, network equipment, and industrial computers, also used 64-bit microprocessors, such as the Quantum Effect Devices R5000. 64-bit computing started to drift down to the personal computer desktop from 2003 onward, when some models in Apple's Macintosh lines switched to PoRPC 970 processors, termed G5 by Apple, and AMD released its first 64-bit x86-64 processor. <laughs> <laughs> Limits of processors In principle, a 64-bit microprocessor can address 16 ABEs 16 times 10246. Topic two hundred and sixty four eighteen quintillion four hundred and forty six quadrillion seven hundred and forty four trillion seventy three billion seven hundred and nine million five hundred and fifty one thousand six hundred and sixteen bytes, or about eighteen point four exabytes of memory. However, not all instruction sets, and not all processors implementing those instruction sets, support a full 64-bit virtual or physical address space. The x86-64 architecture as of 2016 allows 48 bits for virtual memory and, for any given processor, up to 52 bits for physical memory. These limits allow memory sizes of 256 tebibytes, 256 times 10244 bytes and 4 pebibytes, 4 times 10245 bytes respectively. A PC cannot currently contain 4 pebibytes of memory due to the physical size of the memory chips, but AMD envisioned large servers, shared memory clusters, and other uses of physical address space that might approach this in the foreseeable future. Thus the 52-bit physical address provides ample room for expansion while not incurring the cost of implementing full 64-bit physical addresses. Similarly, the 48-bit virtual address space was designed to provide more than 65,216 times the 32-bit limit of 4 GB 4 times 10,243 bytes, allowing room for later expansion and incurring no overhead of translating full 64-bit addresses. <laughs> 
The Power ISA V3.0 allows 64 bits for an effective address, mapped to a segmented address with between 65 and 78 bits allowed, for virtual memory, and, for any given processor, up to 60 bits for physical memory. The Oracle Spark Architecture 2015 allows 64 bits for virtual memory and, for any given processor, between 40 and 56 bits for physical physical memory, the ARMARCH 64 Virtual Memory System architecture allows 48 bits for virtual memory and, for any given processor, from 32 to 48 bits for physical memory. Topic: 64-bit data timeline 1961 IBM delivers the IBM 7030 stretch supercomputer, which uses 64-bit data words and 32 or 64-bit instruction words. 1974 Control Data Corporation launches the CDC Star 100 vector supercomputer, which uses a 64-bit word architecture. Prior CDC systems were based on a 60-bit architecture. International Computers Limited launches the ICL 2900 series with 32-bit, 64-bit, and 128-bit twos complement integers, 64-bit and 128-bit floating point, 32-bit, 64-bit, and 128-bit packed decimal and a 128-bit accumulator register. The architecture has survived through a succession of ICL and Fujitsu machines. The latest is the Fujitsu Supernova, which emulates the original environment on 64-bit Intel processors. 1976 Cray Research delivers the first Cray-1 supercomputer, which is based on a 64-bit word architecture and will form the basis for later Cray vector supercomputers. 1983 ELXSI launches the ELXSI 6400 parallel mini supercomputer. The ELXSI architecture has 64-bit data registers but a 32-bit address space. 1989 Intel introduces the Intel i860 reduced instruction set computing RISC processor. Marketed as a 64-bit microprocessor. It had essentially a 32-bit architecture, enhanced with a 3D graphics unit capable of 64-bit integer operations. 1993 Atari introduces the Atari Jaguar video game console, which includes some 64-bit wide data paths in its architecture. Topic. 64-bit address timeline 1991 MIPS Computer Systems produces the first 64-bit microprocessor, the R4000, which implements the MIPS 3 architecture, the third revision of its MIPS architecture. The CPU is used in SGI graphics workstations starting with the Iris Crimson. Kendall Square Research deliver their first KSR-1 supercomputer, based on a proprietary 64-bit RISC processor architecture running OSF.1. 1992 Digital Equipment Corporation introduces the pure 64-bit alpha architecture which was born from the PRISM project. 1994 Intel announces plans for the 64-bit IA64 architecture jointly developed with Hewlett-Packard as a successor to its 32-bit IA32 processors. 1995-96 
1998 launch date was targeted. 1995 Sun launches a 64-bit Spark processor, the UltraSpark. Fujitsu owned HAL Computer Systems launches workstations based on a 64 bit CPU. HAL's independently designed first generation SPARC 64. IBM releases the A10 and A30 microprocessors, the first 64 bit PoRPC as processors. IBM also releases a 64-bit as-400 system upgrade, which can convert the operating system, database and applications. 1996 Nintendo introduces the Nintendo 64 video game console, built around a low-cost variant of the MIPS R4000. HP releases the first implementation of its 64-bit PA RISC 2.0 architecture, the PA8000. 1998 IBM releases the POWER3 line of full 64-bit PoRPC, power processors. 1999 Intel releases the instruction set for the IA64 architecture. AMD publicly discloses its set of 64-bit extensions to IA32, called X8664 later branded AMD 64. 2000 IBM ships its first 64-bit Z, architecture mainframe, the Z series Z900. Z architecture is a 64-bit version of the 32-bit ESA 390 architecture, a descendant of the 32-bit system 360 architecture. 2001 Intel ships its IA64 processor line after repeated delays in getting to market. Now branded Itanium and targeting high-end servers, sales fail to meet expectations. 2003 AMD introduces its Opteron and Athlon 64 processor lines, based on its AMD 64 architecture which is the first x86-based 64-bit processor architecture. Apple also ships the 64-bit. G5 PoRPC 970 CPU produced by IBM. Intel maintains that its Itanium chips would remain its only 64-bit processors. 2004 Intel, reacting to the market success of AMD, admits it has been developing a clone of the AMD 64 extensions named IA32E later renamed EM64T, then yet again renamed to Intel 64. Intel ships updated versions of its Xeon and Pentium 4 processor families supporting the new 64-bit instruction set. Via Technologies announces the Isaiah Chapter 64-bit processor. 2006 Sony, IBM, and Toshiba begin manufacturing the 64-bit cell processor for use in the PlayStation 3, servers, workstations, and other appliances. Intel released Core 2 Duo as the first mainstream x86-64 processor for its mobile, desktop, and workstation line. Prior 64-bit extension processor lines were not widely available in the consumer retail market most of 64-bit Pentium 4.D were OEM, 64-bit Pentium 4, Pentium D, and Celeron were not into mass production until late 2006 due to poor yield issue most of good yield wafers were targeted at server and mainframe while mainstream still remain 130 nm 32-bit processor line until 2006 and soon became low-end after Core 2 debuted. <laughs> <laughs> 
AMD released their first 64-bit mobile processor and manufactured in 90 nanometers. 2011 Arm Holdings announces ARM V8A, the first 64-bit version of the Arm architecture. 2012 ARM Holdings announced their Cortex-A53 and Cortex-A57 cores, their first cores based on their 64-bit architecture, on 30 October 2012. 2013 Apple announces the iPhone 5S, the first 64-bit smartphone, which uses their A7 ARM V8A based system on a chip. 2014 Google announces the Nexus 9, the first Android device to run on a 64-bit Tegra K1 processor. Topic: 64-bit operating system timeline. 1985 Cray releases UNICOS, the first 64-bit implementation of the Unix operating system. 1993 DEC releases the 64-bit DEC OSF, 1AXP Unix-like operating system later renamed TRU64 Unix for its systems based on the Alpha architecture. 1994 Support for the R8000 processor is added by Silicon Graphics to the IRIX operating system in release 6.0. 1995 DEC releases OpenVIMS 7.0, the first full 64-bit version of OpenVIMS for Alpha. First 64-bit Linux distribution for the Alpha architecture is released. 1996 Support for the R4X00 processors in 64-bit mode is added by Silicon Graphics to the IRIX operating system in release 6.2 1998 Sun releases Solaris 7, with full 64-bit Ultraspark support. 2000 IBM releases Z.OS, a 64-bit operating system descended from MVS, for the new Z series 64-bit mainframes, 64-bit Linux on Z systems follows the CPU release almost immediately. 2001 Linux becomes the first OS kernel to fully support x86-64 on a simulator, as no x86-64 processors had been released yet. 2001 Microsoft releases Windows XP 64-bit edition for the Itanium's IA64 architecture, although it was able to run 32-bit applications through an execution layer. 2003 Apple releases its Mac OS by 10.3 Panther operating system which adds support for native 64-bit integer arithmetic on PoRPC 970 processors. Several Linux distributions release with support for AMD 64. FreeBSD releases with support for AMD 64. 2005 on January 4, Microsoft discontinues Windows XP 64-bit edition, as no PCs with IA64 processors had been available since the previous September, and announces that it is developing x86-64 versions of Windows to replace it. On January 31, Sun releases Solaris 10 with support for AMD 64 and EM64T processors. On April 29, Apple releases Mac OS by 10.4 Tiger 
which provides limited support for 64-bit command line applications on machines with PoRPC 970 processors. Later versions for Intel-based Macs supported 64-bit command line applications on Macs with EM640 processors. On April 30, Microsoft releases Windows XP Professional X64 Edition and Windows Server 2003 by 64 Edition for AMD 64 and EM640 processors. 2006 Microsoft releases Windows Vista, including a 64-bit version for AMD 64 EM640 processors that retains 32-bit compatibility. In the 64-bit version, all Windows applications and components are 64-bit, although many also have their 32-bit versions included for compatibility with plugins. 2007 Apple releases Mac OS by 10.5 Leopard which fully supports 64-bit applications on machines with PoRPC 970 or EM640 processors 2009 Microsoft releases Windows 7, which, like Windows Vista, includes a full 64-bit version for AMD 64, Intel 64 processors. Most new computers are loaded by default with a 64-bit version. It also releases Windows Server 2008 R2, which is the first 64-bit only operating system released by Microsoft. Apple releases Mac OS by 10.6, Snow Leopard, which ships with a 64 bit kernel for AMD 64, Intel 64 processors. Although only certain recent models of Apple computers will run the 64 bit kernel by default. Most applications bundled with Mac OS by 10.6 are now also 64 bit. 2011 Apple releases Mac OS by 10.7, Lion, which runs the 64 bit kernel by default on supported machines. Older machines that are unable to run the 64 bit kernel run the 32 bit kernel, but, as with earlier releases, can still run 64 bit applications. Lion does not support machines with 32 bit processors. Nearly all applications bundled with Mac OS by 10.7 are now also 64-bit, including iTunes. 2013 Apple releases iOS 7, which, on machines with Arch 64 processors, has a 64-bit kernel that supports 64-bit applications. 2014 Google releases Android Lollipop, the first version of the Android operating system with support for 64-bit processors. 2017 Apple releases iOS 11, supporting only machines with Arch 64 processors. It has a 64-bit kernel that only supports 64-bit applications. 32-bit applications are no longer compatible. Topic: 64-bit applications. Topic: 32-bit vs 64-bit. A change from a 32-bit to a 64-bit architecture is a fundamental alteration, as most operating systems must be extensively modified to take advantage of the new architecture, because that software has to manage the actual memory addressing hardware. <laughs> 
Other software must also be ported to use the new abilities. Older 32 bit software may be supported either by virtue of the 64 bit instruction set being a superset of the 32 bit instruction set, so that processors that support the 64 bit instruction set can also run code for the 32 bit instruction set, or through software emulation, or by the actual implementation of a 32 bit process processor core within the 64-bit processor, as with some Itanium processors from Intel, which included an IA32 processor core to run 32-bit x86 applications. The operating systems for those 64-bit architectures generally support both 32-bit and 64-bit applications. One significant exception to this is the AS400 software for which is compiled into a virtual instruction set architecture (ISA) called Technology Independent Machine Interface (TIMI). TIMI code is then translated to native machine code by low-level software before being executed. Executed. The translation software is all that must be rewritten to move the full OS and all software to a new platform, as when IBM transitioned the native instruction set for AS-400 from the older 32-48-bit IMPI to the newer 64-bit PoRPC AS, codenamed Amazon. The IMPI instruction set was quite different from even 32-bit PoRPC, so this transition was even bigger than moving a given instruction set from 32 to 64 bits. On 64-bit hardware with x86-64 architecture AMD 64, most 32-bit operating systems and applications can run with no compatibility issues. While the larger address space of 64-bit architectures makes working with large data sets in applications such as digital video, scientific computing, and large databases easier, there has been considerable debate on whether they or their 32-bit compatibility modes will be faster than comparably priced 32-bit systems for other tasks. A compiled Java program can run on a 32 or 64 bit Java virtual machine with no modification. The lengths and precision of all the built SAN types, such as char, short, int, long, float, and double, and the types that can be used as array indices, are specified by the standard and are not dependent on the underlying architecture. Java programs that run on a 64-bit Java virtual machine have access to a larger address space. Speed is not the only factor to consider in comparing 32-bit and 64-bit processors. Applications such as multitasking, stress testing, and clustering, for high-performance computing HPC, may be more suited to a 64-bit architecture when deployed appropriately. For this reason, 64-bit clusters have been widely deployed in large organizations, such as IBM, HP, and Microsoft. Summary a 64-bit processor performs best with 64-bit software. A 64-bit processor has backward compatibility and will handle most 32-bit software. A 32-bit processor is incompatible with 64-bit software. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Pros and Cons. A common misconception is that 64-bit architectures are no better than 32-bit architectures unless the computer has more than 4 GB of random access memory. This is not entirely true. Some operating systems and certain hardware configurations limit the physical memory space to 3 GB on IA32 systems, due to much of the 3 to 4 GB region being reserved for hardware addressing. See 3 GB barrier. 64 bit architectures can address far more than 4 GB. 
However, IA32 processors from the Pentium Pro onward allow a 36-bit physical memory address space, using Physical Address Extension PAE, which gives a 64 GB physical address range, of which up to 62 GB may be used by main memory. Operating systems that support PAE may not be limited to 4 GB of physical memory, even on IA32 processors. However, drivers and other kernel mode software, more so older versions, may be incompatible with PAE. This has been cited as the reason for 32 bit versions of Microsoft Windows being limited to 4 GB of physical RAM, although the validity of this explanation has been disputed. Some operating systems reserve portions of process address space for OS use, effectively reducing the total address space available for mapping memory for user programs. For instance, 32-bit Windows reserves 1 or 2 GB depending on the settings of the total address space for the kernel, which leaves only 3 or 2 GB respectively of the address space available for user mode. This limit is much higher on 64-bit operating systems. Memory mapped files are becoming more difficult to implement in 32-bit architectures as files of over 4 GB become more common, such large files cannot be memory mapped easily to 32-bit architectures, as only part of the file can be mapped into the address space at a time, and to access such a file by memory mapping, the parts mapped must be swapped into and out of the address space as needed. This is a problem, as memory mapping, if properly implemented by the OS, is one of the most efficient disk-to-memory methods. Some 64-bit programs, such as encoders, decoders and encryption software, can benefit greatly from 64-bit registers, while the performance of other programs, such as 3D graphics-oriented ones, remains unaffected when switching from a 32-bit to a 64-bit environment. Some 64-bit architectures, such as x86-64, support more general-purpose registers than their 32-bit counterparts although this is not due specifically to the word length. This leads to a significant speed increase for tight loops since the processor does not have to fetch data from the cache or main memory if the data can fit in the available registers, example in C. If a processor only has the ability to keep two or three values or variables in registers, it would need to move some values between memory and registers to be able to process variables D and E also, this is a process that takes many CPU cycles. A processor that is able to hold all values and variables in registers can loop through them with no need to move data between registers and memory for each iteration. This behavior can easily be compared with virtual memory, although any effects are contingent on the compiler. The main disadvantage of 64 bit architectures is that, relative to 32 bit architectures, the same data occupies more space in memory due to longer pointers and possibly other types, and alignment padding. This increases the memory requirements of a given process and can have implications for efficient processor cache use. Maintaining a partial 32-bit model is one way to handle this, and is in general reasonably effective. For example, the Z.O.S. operating system takes this approach, requiring program code to reside in 31-bit address spaces the high order bit is not used in address calculation on the underlying hardware platform while data objects can optionally reside in 64-bit regions. Not all such applications require a large address space or manipulate 64-bit data items, so these applications do not benefit from these features. <laughs> <laughs> Software availability <laughs> <laughs> 
x86-based 64-bit systems sometimes lack equivalents of software that is written for 32-bit architectures. The most severe problem in Microsoft Windows is incompatible device drivers for obsolete hardware. Most 32-bit application software can run on a 64-bit operating system in a compatibility mode, also termed an emulation mode, e.g., Microsoft WoW 64 technology for IA64 and AMD64. The 64-bit Windows native mode driver environment runs atop 64-bit NTDLL DLL, which cannot call 32-bit Win32 subsystem code. Often devices whose actual hardware function is emulated in user mode software, like Win printers. Because 64-bit drivers for most devices were unavailable until early 2007, Vista X64, using a 64-bit version of Windows was considered a challenge. However, the trend has since moved toward 64-bit computing, more so as memory prices dropped and the use of more than 4 GB of RAM increased. Most manufacturers started to provide both 32-bit and 64-bit drivers for new devices, so unavailability of 64-bit drivers ceased to be a problem. 64-bit drivers were not provided for many older devices, which could consequently not be used in 64-bit systems. Driver compatibility was less of a problem with open source drivers, as 32-bit ones could be modified for 64-bit use. Support for hardware made before early 2007, was problematic for open source platforms, due to the relatively small number of users. 64-bit versions of Windows cannot run 16-bit software. However, most 32-bit applications will work well. 64-bit users are forced to install a virtual machine of a 16 or 32-bit operating system to run 16-bit applications. Mac OS by 10.4 Tiger and Mac OS by 10.5 Leopard only had a 32-bit kernel, but they can run 64-bit user mode code on 64-bit processors. Mac OS by 10.6, Snow Leopard, had both 32 and 64-bit kernels, and, on most Macs, used the 32-bit kernel even on 64-bit processors. This allowed those Macs to support 64-bit processors while still supporting 32-bit device drivers, although not 64-bit drivers and performance advantages that can come with them. Mac OS by 10.7 Lion ran with a 64-bit kernel on more Macs, and OS by 10.8 Mountain Lion and later Mako's releases only have a 64-bit kernel. On systems with 64-bit processors, both the 32 and 64-bit Mako's kernels can run 32-bit user mode code, and all versions of Mako's include 32-bit versions of libraries that 32-bit applications would use, so 32-bit user mode software for Mako's will run on those systems. Linux and most other Unix-like operating systems, and the C and C++ toolchains for them, have supported 64-bit processors for many years. Many applications and libraries for those platforms are open-source software, written in C and C++, so that if they are 64-bit safe, they can be compiled into 64-bit versions. This source-based distribution model, with an emphasis on frequent releases, makes availability of application software for those operating systems less of an issue. <laughs> 64-bit data models <laughs> 
In 32-bit programs, pointers and data types such as integers generally have the same length. This is not necessarily true on 64-bit machines. Mixing data types in programming languages such as C and its descendants such as C++ and Objective-C may thus work on 32-bit implementations but not on 64-bit implementations. In many programming environments for C and C-derived languages on 64-bit machines, int variables are still 32 bits wide, but long integers and pointers are 64 bits wide. These are described as having an LP64 data model. Another alternative is the ILP64 data model in which all three data types are 64 bits wide, and even SILP64 where short integers are also 64 bits wide. However, in most cases the modifications required are relatively minor and straightforward, and many well-written programs can simply be recompiled for the new environment with no changes. Another alternative is the LLP64 model, which maintains compatibility with 32-bit code by leaving both int and long as 32-bit. AL refers to the long long integer type, which is at least 64 bits on all platforms, including 32-bit environments. Many 64-bit platforms today use an LP64 model including Solaris, X, HPUX, Linux, MacOS, BSD, and IBM Z OS. Microsoft Windows uses an LLP64 model. The disadvantage of the LP64 model is that storing a long into an int may overflow. On the other hand, converting a pointer to a long will work in LP64. In the LLP64 model, the reverse is true. These are not problems which affect fully standard compliant code, but code is often written with implicit assumptions about the widths of data types. C code should prefer uintptr underscore t instead of long when casting pointers into integer objects. A programming model is a choice made to suit a given compiler, and several can coexist on the same OS. However, the programming model chosen as the primary model for the OS Application Programming Interface API typically dominates. Another consideration is the data model used for device drivers. Drivers make up the majority of the operating system code in most modern operating systems, although many may not be loaded when the operating system is running. Many drivers use pointers heavily to manipulate data, and in some cases have to load pointers of a certain size into the hardware they support for direct memory access DMA. As an example, a driver for a 32-bit PCI device asking the device to DMA data into upper areas of a 64-bit machine's memory could not satisfy requests from the operating system to load data from the device to memory above the 4 GB barrier, because the pointers for those addresses would not fit into the DMA registers of the device. This problem is solved by having the OS take the memory restrictions of the device into account when generating requests to drivers for DMA, or by using an input-output memory management unit IOMMU. Topic: <laughs> Current 64-bit architectures. As of May 2018, 64-bit architectures for which processors are being manufactured include the 64-bit extension created by AMD to Intel's x86 architecture later licensed by Intel, commonly termed x86-64, AMD-64, or x64. 
AMD's AMD 64 extensions, used in Athlon 64, Opteron, Semprin, Turian 64 Phenom, Athlon 2, Phenom 2, FX, Ryzen, and EPYC processors. Intel's Intel 64 extensions, used in Intel Core 2 i3, i5, i7, i9, some Atom, and newer Celeron, Pentium, and Xeon processors. Intel's K10M architecture, a variant of Intel 64 with no CMOV, MMX, and SSE instructions, used in Xeon Phi coprocessors, binary incompatible with x86-64 programs. VIA Technologies 64-bit extensions, used in the VIA Nano processors. IBM's power architecture. IBM's POWER4, POWER5, POWER6, POWER7, POWER8, POWER9, and IBM A2 processors Spark V9 architecture Oracle's M8 and S7 processors Fujitsu's SPARC 6412 and SPARC 64XIFX processors. IBM's Z architecture, a 64 bit version of the ESA 390 architecture, used in IBM's E Server Z series and System Z mainframes. IBM Z13 and Z14. Hitachi AP8000E HP Intel's IA64 architecture Intel's Itanium processors MIPS Technologies MIPS64 architecture ARM Holdings Arch64 architecture Elbrus architecture Elbrus 8S NECSX architecture SX Aurora TSUBASA RISC-V Most architectures of 64 bits that are derived from the same architecture of 32 bits can execute code written for the 32-bit versions natively, with no performance penalty. This kind of support is commonly called bi-arch support or more generally multi-arch support. Topic. See also Computer memory Topic. Notes This article is based on material taken from the Free Online Dictionary of Computing prior to 1 November 2008 and incorporated under the relicensing. Terms of the GFDL, version 1. 3 or later.